Well, welcome back, everyone. It was great to see everyone's smiling, shining yes. faces after such a great <laughs> summer. I hope everyone's summer was great. Um, we are going to uh, begin. We have six items on the calendar. And what we are going to do in the essence of time, I am going to um, have Vice Chancellor Bertram uh, go through all of the resolutions first. So if you have questions, please write them down. And then at the end of the, the presentation, we'll do the questions and we should have uh, time for everything. Know that we're a little bit crunched on time. So we're going to get through this. First, I will ask for an approval of the minutes for the February 6th meeting of the facilities. And so moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. That passes. I'm going to uh, turn it over now to Vice Chancellor Bertram for her presentation. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thank you. Um, the first of the six resolutions is a resolution to request that CUCF execute a new round of approximately 30 new requirements contracts um, to be used on an as-needed basis. Um, this is our effort to streamline our operation. It's more, more um, efficient. Um, this is for designs for contracts that are $15 million or smaller. It's architectural, building envelopes, historic preservation, landscape. Each contract is not to be above $5 million, it's a three-year term, a three-year renewal. Um, <clears throat> this has been <coughs> uh, great for us to use. In the past three years, we've awarded 40 um, architectural design contracts. The average cost is about, for each one, is about 300000 And you should understand that if we didn't do it this way, for every one of those 40 contracts, we would have had to do a regular procurement, um, and I would say that using the architectural requirements contract probably saved us four to five months on, um, on each one. So that's, um, that's the first one. The second is a lease renewal for Baruch College. Um, the site houses the Peru College Daycare Center since 2001. The current lease expires on June 30th, 2016. The proposed lease renewal will be for five years. Um, the current rate is about $53. The renewal rate is $74. Um, and if you look at that, it's a very, very big jump. But if you look at where the location is, this kind of reflects the dramatic rise of commercial rents in the Midtown section of um, Manhattan. Now, renewing this lease is a priority because the daycare center is specialized and finding another site for this would be very, very difficult. Um, the landlord provides full services to the daycare center, including cleaning and HVAC. Um, the third resolution is for the Borough of Manhattan Community College. It's a building-wide HVAC um, control system. This project is performed under the DASNY Energy Contract Program. Um, it's from Plan NYC. And the project at BMCC will consist of replacement of two chillers, replacement of air handlers, um, chilled water treatment, upgrades to the cooling system, um, and new cooling tower, towers. Uh, the design was completed, completed this year by Genesis Engineering and issued for bid. Um, the estimated construction duration is 27 months. Um, and when the project is completed, it's expected to reduce BMCC's energy costs by one million annually. Um, number four <coughs> is Hostos Community College. Um, it's the Savoy Manor uh, roof replacement. This building is on the Grand Concourse. It has a lot of administrative offices. It's 17,000 square feet. The existing roof is 20 years old, way past its life expectancy, and there's quite a few leaks. The new roof, which is going to be a green roof, is a sedum-type roof. It's a very low maintenance. Um, it's a low-growing plant requires very little water, no mowing or trimming. 
Um, and it's very commonly used as a low-cost green roof. Um, green roofs also provide added insulation to the building and help lower water runoff into storm systems. Okay. Take a deep breath. Um, no. <laughs> Um, gotcha. Am I going too fast? This is no, fine. no this is perfect. Fine. Thank you. Number five is another lease renewal. Um, it's Queens College and the School of <coughs> Professional Studies. It's a at West Forty Third Street. Um, it's for about fifty nine thousand square feet. Um, the un we've been a tenant here since nineteen eighty five. Um, the space presently houses classrooms and offices for the Murphy Institute, for the Calandra Institute, and women in work at the center of Queens College. This lease ends in March of 2016. Um, after an extensive search in the area, we think that this is the best value for CUNY. As everybody knows, the cost of leasing in this area and the area where Brook is, Brook is just going up. Um, the starting rent will be $56.50 per uh, square feet. Um, the landlord's also going to provide a contribution of $1.8 million for additional improvements, which are recommendations from us. The current installation is in good condition, um, and renewing this lease will save the university the cost of recreating large classroom installation. Um, and the landlord's going to continue to provide cleaning and interior repairs to the university. Um, number six, um, this is for a 10-year lease for approximately 8,000 rentable square feet on the 13th floor at, the, at 230 West 41st Street. Um, that's the Research Foundation building. The School of Journalism has been a tenant on the third and fourth floor. Um, the, the school's in the need of additional administrative space. Um, we have an agreement with the Research Foundation to lease the entire 13th floor, which is 8,000 square feet. Um, the School of Journalism will fund, fund the rent and tenant improvements from, for the lease from a non-tax levy source. Um, and the lease for, will be for a 10 year term with a tenant cancellation option after three years. Um, so that's the last of the six. Thank you. I, I just have a couple questions. Um, for the first uh, resolution, the, the architectural design services contract, requirement contracts, what projects have we done um, these contracts for previously? Now, let me give you some examples, because we use these for quite a bit, and they were really helpful, and they really reduce the time that it, it took to do this. Like the child care center playground at Lehman College, um, the roof restoration for the Google Memorial Library at Bronx Community College, the ninth floor build out at the Graduate Center. You can see we use this all over, um, all over the university. Um, the library renovation and expansion at LaGuardia Community College. Um, multiple lecture hall upgrades at Brooklyn, um, and the Savoy building replacement. So we use this all over, and it's been very, very helpful. And it's reduced time, which reduce, reduces costs. And you know, most of the many of the things that we do, we do in buildings that that students are using. So in order to do some of these things, there has to be lots of movement. We close off areas. Um, so it's a real stress on the school. So the shorter the time period, the better. Okay. And these contracts have really helped. Okay. Okay. And you had mentioned uh, with the Baruch College with the lease renewal part, you said we went from fifty-three to seventy-four dollars. Is that market rate? Um, yes. Actually, we had our um, our broker Newmark basically take a look at that because the increase that's astronomical. But if you you know you try and get an apartment in that area, that it just reflects how much it's going to cost. But you, we need to have a child care center. Okay. And, and replacing a child care center, the, the regulations of the health department are pretty stringent. Okay. So the cost to go someplace else would really be significant. Okay. Okay. You also mentioned, sorry guys, you also mentioned at BMCC 
Um, it's a reduction of a million dollars a year in cost. That's a great cost-saving effort. <laughs> but um, how long will the construction take on that? I think I think about 27 months. Okay. Okay. And um, my last question, I guess, is with the Graduate School of Journalism, what programs are happening in this space? Well, I could give you <laughs> what I've been told, but I think Dean Bartlett's in the back. And I think that it really helps for someone who's going to actually live there and feel it and whatever. And she convinced us that she needed more space. Oh. So why don't you come? <laughs> so why don't you talk about what's going to go, you know, what's going on and what's going to go in there? Sure. Good, thank you. Um, Good to see you again, Dean. Martin. Nice to see you. Um, you can come to commencement again. <laughs> um, we, uh, as Vice Chancellor Bertram mentioned, we are out of space, but we have a lot of new initiatives. Um, so several of them will go up to that new floor. One of them is a new professional development initiative where we will be uh, training mid-career journalists um, who work in the city right now um, who need help with social media, help with web video, help with audio podcasting. And so we'll be conducting um, evening and weekend and sort of short immersive courses in that. Um, so there'll be two classrooms up there. There'll be room for professors and staff. Um, there's a big event space. We, we've tried to create a home for journalists, the journalism community in New York. So we host a lot of um, events up there or that's what we plan to do. And then the Town Knight Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism, which will work very closely with the Professional Development Initiative, will be up there as well. You mentioned new media. Mm -hmm. What kind of new media? You, um, you know, everything from social media, digital media training. So, for example, a lot of the faculty, the journalism faculty at all of the undergraduate uh, colleges, we'd like to be able to train them in social media, um, creating web videos, um, learning how to create podcasts, doing data journalism, data visualization, a lot of the things that are in great demand right now where the new business, you know, BuzzFeeds and Vice Media, they can't find enough people quickly enough. This will afford them a, a larger pool of, of uh, working journalists as well as graduates. Alums will be able to take advantage of it as well. That sounds exciting. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any other questions for Dean Bartlett? Yes. Well, not for Dean Bartlett. Oh, that, okay. that's an easy Thank one from a real estate point. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes, Jay. Okay. So, um, but I hope we're not going to move to a thirty-minute a pop, uh, you know, model going forward because it's a little. No, no, no. This is just a, an anomaly. Okay. But this this is, we don't have a lot. Okay. This just, is be, wait. This is because every committee is meeting. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I, I understand. <laughs> and I, and I got to um, get one. Okay. Yeah. Just in terms of the design contracts, which and certainly as you've explained, this has been a great innovation. What what in terms of this cycle versus the last cycle? Can you give us a report? Briefly, since we're short on time, just on for contractor performance, we've been using this a lot. I know we, you discussed this in other meetings, but how, how, are, how are our set of contractors doing on these design? You know, who, who is naughty, who's nice, and, uh, and, and just are there ways the process can be improved, even though the process itself is a vast improvement over what came before? Well, I mean, it's, it's, it, for any project, there are, for specific projects, um, Consultants that perform basically better than others, mm -hmm. but our our RFP our our process this time changed a little bit, and we basically know more about um, what we should ask for this time than we knew because the last time was basically the first time that we did it. But as far as performance, it really depends upon the project, yeah. and, and and that and and we got 125 proposals. Wow! Um, so that's quite a bit, and I I think last time. I think we got even more last time. Bob, do you remember the? Yeah, more last time. Like there was so like I, I remember this. It was almost. Excuse me. Two hundred twenty-five. And I, and that's because the industry there's work. Yeah. And when we did this last time, there wasn't so much work. Can Can you give us one or two examples of of th different things that you have asked for in this cycle and ha what you're expecting to accomplish from that? Well, I think <coughs> the difference is basically how they were evaluated. Mm -hmm. um, I was not on the evaluation committee because I'm not supposed to be. Bob, can you, is there anything when you did the evaluations that, can you give some specifics on what was different? One or two. Yeah, oh, yeah. fine. When we did the, the first uh, set of consultant contracts like this, we identified four or five distinct categories that we wanted architects to identify themselves as being specialists in whether it was um, 
historical preservation, uh, landmarks, um, high-efficiency buildings. There are, there are four or five different categories. And it kind of narrowed down the way the proposals were done in terms of they, they applied to categories. We, we didn't do that this time. We wanted the general, their general approach to architecture or engineering uh, and projects that they had worked on. Uh, and we, we had a committee. I was on the committee. Uh, my director of construction was on the committee. And my five assistant directors, all of whom are architects, were on the committee. And we basically got the proposals. We each ranked each, ranked each of the proposals. And then we, we kind of identified where the scores came out. And they came out very close in terms of the, where, the, where, where we drew the line in terms of the number of firms we did. Now, I just wanted to add to what Judy said. I mean, fundamentally, we get about $200 million a year in critical maintenance money from the state, and then we get some money from the city. And we decide whether we will do the projects either ourselves or have DASNY do them for us. And more and more, we've been going to doing them ourselves. And when we do the con projects ourselves, we use these, these Consultant, this, the consultants from our list to identify the architects that we want. And our process is primarily we'll identify, my ADs will identify three or four of the, 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 the firms that we think the most suitable to do that specific project. And then we will get a proposal from each of those, those firms about how they would staff it. And we get a separate proposal about what their fees will be. And then we select the architect based on the technical proposal that they've made, and then we kind of negotiate the fees based upon the fee proposals that we've received. The process works very well, and, and as Judy says, we save a lot of time not yeah. having, to, and, and the firms save a lot, lot of money not having to, to, to do it every time, too. So it works okay. very well. Great. Okay. And All right. I, I, would, I would also add that, um, you know, I can't say that we don't have issues and we don't have problems because every, every consultant different and whatever, but using these contracts, we have not had um, that many problems. You know, the problem comes when you hire a contractor to basically do construction and whatever. So this has worked really well, and I think it's worked really well because it's small enough to handle. You know, when we, when we basically do construction on a large building, we go out and do it separately. But this has worked really well because, it, you know what, if it didn't work well, um, and our experience from three years ago was not good. We wouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Um, and we have this for we have this for engineering also. Right. Any other? We have engineering. We have engineering services. We have inspection services, which is part of the engineering things. And we have design contracts. Mm -hmm. so we've got the full spectrum of professional design and construction engineering firms that we'll, we'll go to on a regular basis and, and get proposals. Bob, do you know off the top of your head when engineering? When, when the engineering one expires, will we be? We've just, done, we've just redone the engineering, the engineering one as well. I think that we took that. So it works pretty well. And if it didn't work yeah. well, you know, and there also is a mechanism. You talk about performance or problems with contractors. There is a mechanism um, to basically take a look at that. Um, we look at the city's Vendex. We look in. And we also have our own unit that does vendor integrity and performance. And, and also, just, just to augment that, I mean, basically, as I said, we go out to proposals to two or three firms that we think are most qualified. Mm -hmm. If you haven't done a good job for us on the last one, you're not going to make the yeah, list. And they, and they have the incentive <laughs> to build for a specific knowledge for CUNY, so that's good, too. And, and, and we're also, I think, I mean, this is, we, we have, I think we're small enough, you know, when you're doing a much, we're small enough to, for Bob to basically, if you ask Bob about any contractor on any one of these, 400 plus projects, he could probably tell you what their performance is. Um, so I think we've worked out um, a system in this area that really works. Um, could it be, you know, could it be improved? Yes, like everything else. Yeah. Okay, just on the on the Baruch lease, that, that, and I can certainly understand the need to renew it for the five years and lock it in. It is becoming an expensive area. So are we starting to plan for how we're going to consolidate ancillary services? For example, that location is no longer even that convenient for Baruch. Baruch used to have one of its major classroom buildings right there. And so should we be trying to think about, again, five years out or X years out, consolidating these things so we have a facility that's usable by Baruch and Hunter or something like that? Well, it's interesting you should say that because I thought your question would be, why do you have a five-year lease? 
because having right now having a five-year lease is a rarity and the reason that we're having a five-year lease is because the landlord doesn't want us yeah. okay and I don't know what Al did but he broke I, okay. Al worked with the <laughs> say that. Al worked with the landlord to get us a five-year lease so we yes we are starting today to discuss what we're going to do about it now this is not like getting classroom space yeah this is really I mean there are different rules for children that are from zero to three from and three to five there's totally different regulations so this is a re going to be a real challenge for us. Yes. Getting office space and classroom space, it's much easier than this. But so we're going to be working on are, it. Yeah, and we're thinking about I think he started it. yesterday, right, Al? Because that it's that's a real we're issue. Thinking about maybe contracting it out to a daycare provider or something like that at some point. Um, because that might allow services for more of the colleges and you know, I, and I. I agree. This I'm not ask, even asking for a solution. I mean, this is a very naughty we, problem. We have we, you know, we haven't gotten we haven't gotten that far. But the issue of whoever it is, the issue of leasing space in that area, whether we contract out, whether sure. we, you know, and and the thing, another issue that has like changed this a little bit is pre-K, free pre-K. Um, so, in other, in other campuses, um, there are children that are going to pre-Ks in schools um, and not at our campuses. So it's kind of like changed a little bit. Okay, on, on the BMCC HVAC, that's obviously a huge contract. So, so and, and I'm sure it is desperately needed from the description. Yes, it's, it it's past the end of its useful life. But how, how do we know that we got the best price and that we, we you know, the, the, the scope of work? I mean, I think you went to one of your design firms, but but how do we price those things versus market? Because it, you know, I, I sort of ballparked it against what uh, price per square foot to purchase in the in the in the area was, uh, and I'm just wondering what what the benchmark would be for determining you know how, how we're doing that. Well, the the, the this is um, this is a uh, Dasney contract, okay. and Dasney basically is you know uses the same rules we do and whether we get the best price it's a you know it's a competitive bid and the, the scope the scope for the project Bob and his staff look at we make sure then Dasney checks it over um, so I think that we're getting uh, the appropriate price for what we're in other words the contractors the contractors that win contracts from us really go through um, have to go through a, a tremendous process more so than the private industry. So I'm not, you know, I'm not so concerned about whether we got it because by the time you get to award the contract, um, there's been a lot of competition. Okay. Bob, did you want to add Let me just add something to that because this is a DASNY uh, energy contract. And the DASNY energy contracts are different than most of the things that we do in that they've got a pre-selected number of engineering firms that do these, do these energy projects. And they are allowed to pre qualify the energy con the, the engineering firm itself pre qualifies its construction contractors to whom it will bid the job. So it's not an open competitive bid. They're bidding it to pre qualify. This is the way a private developer does it. Yeah. They bid it to pre qualified firms that they know will do the job, yeah. and they get a competitive price from those firms to do the work. They also guarantee the energy savings as part of the contract. Okay, and that's a great comfort for a brutally difficult project yes. like this. Right. Are there any other questions? Fantastic. We're going to vote on these resolutions now. There, um, I will move them forward. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? These resolutions pass. Thank you very much. Thank you for showing up, Donovan. Good to see you back. Okay. Welcome, and welcome, everybody. Have a good afternoon. This meeting is adjourned.